sure that people are able to roll dice and add numbers and kill things. It's a, such a complete different experience, and I've been trying to instill that role playing. Here's my character; he's got a personality instead of just being numbers on a sheet, kind of ideal to these people, and it's hard. Were you an organized play before, or were you? Um, no. That's how the organized play system works. Yeah, it's just it's a different style. Yeah. 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 We we had that same experience. I I've I'm from the exact same kind of uh, background as you. It's role play heavy. It's your character has a per personality. You, I give out role play experience for encounters that aren't battle, things like this. That is not the world of the organized play. I, <laughs> I, I just got into the encounters and also the RPGA in the last six months myself, and you just it's just, you just got to adjust your own expectations to it because uh, people look at you funny when you try and act your character in that mode. A is lot. it? Is that kind of your only game in town right now, or no? I'm still, I'm still in the other one. I've been in for a four and a half years now. I if mean, I, that 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 is it's just kind of <laughs> you get what you get with that. Fortunately, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, with, with yeah. The edition, there's there is plenty of role playing opportunity. It's yeah. just you're not going to fight with the RPGA. Right. 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 Now, if you were to take those it, same adventures and be running it for your own group. Mm -hmm. You can easily fit role play sure. into it has been getting in better as I've, as I've been like making characters with exceptionally strong personalities mm -hmm. to really sh bring it out and show how fun it can be. And some people have taken onto it fairly well, and some have just ignored it completely. Mm -hmm. And it's a little frustrating, but you know, it feels the like they're missing out on but it, you know, eighty-five percent of the overall goal of what D and D is to me. So, as someone who's been playing for eleven years and DMing for eight, it just it hurts. <laughs> you know I mean? uh, I'd recommend giving that feedback to, like, go on Wizards Forum and actually type that out in the comments and let them know, uh, because it is a it is an important point that is missed in in that environment. I feel I agree with you. <laughs> so when I run for them, uh, when a skill challenge happens, <coughs> what, what I'll do is completely ignore whatever the written material is and tell them this is what you're trying to do. How are you going to do it? And completely ignore everything it tells you about, like, these are the skills you're supposed to use, here's the secondaries. No, you tell me what you're going to do, and if it's creative enough, I'll give it to you. Because it forces, them to think outside the box. <laughs> it forces them to think outside the box, and it's just like, well, what, what skills can we run? Well, what do you want to do? It forces them to think outside the box, and it ends up having a more memorable experience for it. Um, but it's, I can use some help if anyone has any advice on that. It just, it's hard. Treat it as a gateway drug. Yeah. Like, you are trying to get these people hooked on the role-playing aspect of it, and you, you can't change the organized play, but the organized play groups are made up of people, yes. and you will be able to identify those yeah. that really that it really key onto it, and those that are like, you know, sure. just tell me what I have to roll. Like, you're never going to be able to help that guy. Um, right. I'll, you know. I'll put it to you this way. You can do it. I had my, my fighter in uh, the first RPGA event, and he got sick of the conversation because they were trying to do diplomacy. He went and took a whiz off the end of a dock. I mean, for a while. I did it in character, and they, a couple people looked at me weird. A couple people said they averted their eyes, and it was kind of a fun little role play moment. If you keep the role play moment short, you can infuse them in there, but I, it's probably going to stop short of actually doing the skill challenges that way yeah, if you're in a normal event. Yeah, the guy that read the book for a while. I was just going to say, uh, we're trying to tie your players back into a little bit more of a role play aspect. It, it depends a little bit on the players. I've got a lot of players that come to games for different reasons. Some are there to blow off steam, some are there to play the game, some are just there to be social, and you get that mix. What I find works well is to force them onto one another. What we implemented was that we took poker chips and we handed them to the players. And they are allotted an XP value that goes up and scales as they level. And when they think that one of the other players has done something cool, they will hand each other XP chips. And it helps enforce the rest of the table without you having to do much for it. Right. So, yeah, really well in that. Uh, um, yeah, I have a question events. because I've had a player that um, has a hard time playing anything but like a certain type of alignment. Like <laughs> Um, I'm running a Dark Sun second edition game right now, and they, they're having trouble like understanding why their lawful good actions aren't being rewarded in the same way that like survival <laughs> actions are being rewarded. I'm not not like experience wise, but the results in play. And she's so used to playing like this lawful good alignment. So she's where surprised in, in the world where lawful good yeah. is yeah. more you know, rewarded that way. Apis hates you, the end. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much the reason, yeah. I mean, that's ultimately, it. that's that's what you have. I mean, it, I, 
you can explain that the consequences are different in this world, just like anything else. And I mean, yeah. if that's uh, how how uh, how familiar are they with Dark Sun? Oh well, this is, this is a campaign that's run for like a year and a half. Okay, but uh, now she so she she just she, really she this is repeatedly like every week. She's like, well, I don't really want to do that because and she she'll just like pick the action of least resistance or something like that, and then she wonders why. You know, is she a, is she a paladin or something? Or uh, uh, well, it was a cleric. preserver slash uh, preserver cleric. So. Well, I mean, if if she's deviating from her faith, of course, then you know. There, well, there's no faith. Well, right, right. But I'm saying from her beliefs and everything. Right, right. You, yeah, I mean, no matter whether it's a faith or a personal belief system or your conscience or relationships with other people, you, regardless of alignment, you have to push home that consequences have actions. And even though it's a path of least resistance, you're giving something up whenever you choose something. And it might be as much as I didn't get the ham sandwich because I got the turkey sandwich. But generally, it's well. I decided to do this, so now X suffers, or Y suffers. You, I, I think if you bring home those choices, regardless of whether you're playing alignment or not, or whatever alignment it is, you, you highlight those things. And at least for me, if you can find a way to challenge mm -hmm. their um, their beliefs, that can shift alignment and everything. By I mean, you have the choice between you know saving the the orphans on a collapsing bridge or and there's like five orphans or saving a town that's being burned down. Sure, go save the town that's being burned down, but now that yeah. orphans are all dead, they're gonna start questioning their beliefs and my citizenship their life. Let me just ask, at the beginning of the campaign, when the character was made, did they pick lawful good? Well they didn't pick lawful good, they picked like neutral good okay. or something. But like did that. you like sit and say, you know, like look the alignment you picked you know, is, you know, goes against the grain of, of the campaign world, and so I just want to know, you know, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking that you want to, you know, swim upstream, and what kinds of things, you know, do you want to explore when we do that, or did you just not, you know, get how the world was laid out, and that, you know, you're going to make a lot more work for yourself, and maybe they would have, you know, I guess what I'm asking is, you know, what were their expectations? You know, we just had, we just had like, that kind of discussion. Yeah, and it, it was it it, it it's a, like an every week thing when we play. Is it's like she, she forgets. Yeah, she wants to be everything to be fairies and unicorns and pretty. Right. So you're so playing her like, son? Oh, or this is a wrong mode. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 you're wrong way from home. Like this is a disconnect. This is not Kansas. Expectations, you know, and what the game's going to deliver. But it means like a year. She's um. Which is really like, uh, it, it's, um, I'm sorry. What you're describing to me, honestly, yeah. um, sounds like she's a real nice person, mm -hmm. but she's in the wrong group right now. At least in the wrong <laughs> campaign. Right. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just, not, it's just it's kind of like and, and it, it may come to the fact that you just have to say, you know, listen, right now, with the game that we're currently playing, and the campaign we're currently running, you're not going to be happy. Thanks, guys. So. Yeah. Yeah, because the rest of the group, the rest of the group, like even because one of them's her brother, yeah. and they, they all they all get like that. This is you know, this the survival survival is number one, and everything else is just kind of second to that. And they you know they go one way, and she's like, hey wait guys, let's do this, and, and it causes a lot of disconnect. This gentleman over here got a question, and maybe the guy and then back there. Well, this is a good comment on this. I I, I have a friend who always plays Elven Thieves. <laughs> and you know she knows exactly what her elven thieves are like. She always plays them. And then I ran this one campaign where the elves were were Melnibonian. They were not <laughs> Tolkien. They were. They were uh, yeah. So you know they're they're out there. They're you know raising villages and taking slaves and you know horrible horrible things. And 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 you know I explained this to her before the campaign started. You know, I said, you know, these are what the elves are like. So are you sure you still want, yeah, I still want to play it. Okay, and then the game started and she's horrified by all this. And what ended up happening eventually was that she had to drop out of that campaign. Still a great friend, she still plays with me. We, we do other stuff, well, you know, she and I do other stuff, but that campaign just wasn't for her. And, and so she had to sit that one out. It just, they're just, I, you know, her expectations, her desires were not being met by the game. And they just never were gonna be. I, I have a player who can not, He's always claimed that he played different characters. He's like, I like to play all kinds of different characters. <laughs> Every single one of them was a dwarf. No, they were always they're always big, beefy, and strong. 
dumber than a box of rocks, and it had a really, really bad Scottish He was Kevin Hammer. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think the gentleman around there. Yeah, I have a problem. Not a big problem, but I haven't been able to solve it. Like, every time I run combat, like, in a session or a campaign, all the easy fights wind up being hard, and all the hard fights wind up being easy. That's <laughs> called players. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so yeah. for that. Yes. But it's just to get to the point of absurdity, like, I'll give them a bane weapon against the creatures they're about to fight, and I'll make sure it's something everybody can use so the fighter won't hog it. And they'll go, sweet, the bane weapon. Let's give it to the mage. <laughs> <laughs> so he stops in his bag and forgets it's there. And when it gets to a fight where they need the bane weapon, like, okay, who's got it? I don't remember. And the mage goes, I uh, wrote it down. Didn't you write it down? No. Are, are you What's nerfing the fight because of them doing it, or do you just do it as written? I, do you help, I do you help them? ahead of time, and I go, okay, <coughs> this should be an appropriate fight, but since they have the bane weapon, it should be easy. And then they don't use the bane weapon, and it's hard, and they have to drag it back in the bane weapon. Barrow, yeah. and Bam, half your, half your, half your, half your enemies become cool. minions at that point. Do you have any NPCs as part of the group? Um, not now. There's no half like henchmen saying, hey boss, you had a bane weapon! No. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 the sword is calling you to feed it. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, what you're describing is you've made way too many assumptions about what the player's going to do. Yeah, but... No, I'm serious. I mean, I do it all the time. Don't trust me. I, we're not alone in this. Um, but you've made assumptions that the players are going to be smart enough to realize that, hey, this is something he gave me a while ago. It's something I need to keep track of. You, it, it sounds just from what you described that they're having. What's the crazy part? Sometimes they're excellent about it. Well, I yeah. know, but that's but, but that's that's what players do. That's yeah. that's what, hell, yeah. that's what I do when they, I play. Sometimes they wreck up our I'm game. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. they are not to be trusted. So <laughs> <laughs> with anything, games would be great if it wasn't for players. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I have some good players. I have Frogger on my phone. You can play that. But, but they always make it harder on you. Yeah, so now these are questions. Um, yeah, this is just jumping off of actually a couple points that have made, been made, the Dark Sun and the RPGA. Um, people come to the table for really different things, and some people are really into the, you know, the casual play, this is my build, kind of, you know, just killing things. Some people, I don't understand those people, I probably won't ever understand them, they come from another planet. But they're really happy doing what they do, right. and the RPGA, for instance, exists for a oh. reason, and, you know, so trying to make your players change the way that they play, sometimes it is just that they don't understand this new way of playing that they've never occurred to them, but sometimes it's just, well, they need a different game. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes just a different character. I mean, yeah. sometimes you just have to say that, yeah. like, this concept, this one just isn't going to fly, can be, you know have them walk off stage left and why don't you make a new character that, you know, will fit in the setting, the system, the game better. And I think there's varying degrees of it too. I mean, some people, they just kind of like a certain style and you can deal with that by the old spotlight time, you know. Uh, you know, a third of the adventure is going to be just beating the crap out of stuff. Another third of the adventure is going to be role playing. And a third, you know, get get your face time, as someone said. Uh, some of it is is that spot where it's just, I mean, it, we, we like to think of this as a hobby, but it's a hobby with it's a hobby here, a hobby here, a hobby here. You know, it, 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 it is a lot of very loose groups together in a way. It's sort of a confederacy, not a republic of gamers, I guess. So. So, so the question, the question about you know what to do with the players that you know forget that they have things and uh, you know and it's not and you know the core question of this encounter is too hard, this encounter is too easy. Um, you know, I know some people feel real strongly about it, but I I will break rules constantly. I will give more hit points to an enemy. I will you know cut their hit points away. Like I mean, I've gotten into situations before, and and for the most part, my players I think they know what's going on, but they don't seem to mind. Um, I think I really pissed off one guy once when uh, he was getting his ass kicked by somebody and I you know, rolled the damage behind the GM screen and I asked him how many hit points he had and he said, how much damage does it do? And I said, no, how many hit points do you have? And he was like, no, tell me what you rolled. Oh, and so I told man. him, he's like, he's like, then I'm dead. Because I didn't want to kill him, but he, you know, he knew what I was doing and it kind of pissed him off. So, but you just have to, like, you have to know what their tolerance is for that kind of thing. If they want, if they want to always be the heroes that always win, like, and, and you're okay with that, I mean, because your level of fun has to come into it too, but if they are okay with that, then let them win. 
like it's it's fine. There's no problem with that. But they, they may not want that, and it's it's important to know that if if they do want to get their asses kicked when they do something wrong, like you know, give that to them. So I'm I'm the ad for the advocate of giving monsters as many hit points as the plot requires. See, that's so, that's that's really killing me. Yeah. I've been so once the players are getting tired, they're down, like, for 4th for edition, they're down to their at-wills. Yeah. The monsters are, some of them are going to start getting taken down pretty quickly. And those that don't are going to run away. And it, that works in some groups, but not in others. Like, if players go, wait, that guy had 30 hit points, this guy's identical to him, and he only has 10. Yeah, and I just don't. But yeah. but my players they don't pay any attention to that they just roll for damage and if they if they got a ton of damage they're happy with it yeah that's just something I've been pulling stops it's like my players suddenly got bad um, <laughs> 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 um, I'm a firm believer that sometimes you know she happens to players die. Um, it's not fun if nobody does. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, different flaws here, man. You get characters, characters, characters. That is hardcore. Oh, you're a little one. You're breaking your legs. Your penalty for failing. I mean, at the same level, your 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 players shouldn't be metagaming. I I think it's really important to discourage that. Um, especially when you're like, no, that guy, that guy has, you know, 50 hit points. No, he doesn't have 50 po hit points. I rolled the hit dice. So, you know, they're like, well, I think it's important uh, to discourage, you know, metagaming in some form. I, I think it's um, a different philosophy, certainly. I mean, uh, for me, I always think that without some kind of risk, it doesn't necessarily have to be yeah. death. But I, I think there, if you're just going around and you're, all, and you're Johnny Awesome and everybody loves you, well, I mean, that's just basic wish fulfillment. And if you want that, I mean, I can give you some dice and a calculator and some paper, and you can sit in your closet and do it and say you're awesome. I mean, I, to me, if, if the risk of death or other risk doesn't come into the game regularly, then I feel like I've cheated my players in some fact because it doesn't have punch. The stakes are that much higher. You gotta, it doesn't have to be death, like I'm saying, but set those stakes. Yes, sir? I agree 100%, and I say death's fine. That's fine. It's good stakes. But what I was going to say, the gentleman who asked the question is, what would you rather have? Would you rather have the players um, sort of beat the tough encounter because you sort of fudge some things, and uh, or would you rather they, that they drag a couple of dead bodies off the scene and then smack themselves in the forehead and say, oh, we had a Bane weapon. Well, now we're going to watch our character sheets a lot better in the future. Who's the real mobster? I've been doing both. <laughs> like, they'll have a hard time with the encounter. I'm like, all right, time to put on my little damn hat and go, all right, start erasing some hit points, make them lower. Make this guy lose the weapon he's about to fling into combat, and they'll still lose, dude. <laughs> like they'll be like, I uh, like it won't be a. We like have a dice for a reason because some it's random and sometimes yeah it just sucks. Yeah, yeah but maybe it, maybe it'll just right. fix it. <laughs> well, I guess the other question is, have you told the players they're not paying attention? Yeah, okay. and they've been telling me I'm designing the counters bad. Like those words oh. and yes. Oh. Well, so now lightning bolt streaks from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about <laughs> player death? What I what I would you know now My put it back down. on them is <laughs> what are the, what are the elements that are bad and then get to what's the what's the root cause for the problem? Like if they don't like the fact that they had to keep track six you know sessions ago that they're carrying around a bane weapon that they didn't remember. You know, there's ways to address that. I mean, it, so it's one of two things. It's either you, you do have a disconnect with them, you know, and then it's real, or, you know, I mean, to take the GM side, they could just be lazy. Right. And, and you just need to get to the bottom of it. Maybe there is something you can change in your own way of designing, you know, uh, encounters that actually will, you know, fit the way they play better. What, what's, what setting are you running? Uh, uh, right now, Beth Okay, I'm not familiar with Pathfinder. It's well, three, what, five, what, five, five, okay, yeah. well, what was making me kind of churn a little bit over here is I had some of that problem when, the, when my players weren't fulfilling the type of roles in like 4E that they should be filling. Yeah. They weren't using their ability to manipulate the battle mat and they were basically just all crashing in there, getting swarmed and <laughs> smacked and didn't realize, oh, I can teleport when I get hit or oh, I can slide or move. And, that yeah. really changes the dynamic of the game. But not quite that I, I know, uh, I understand that. I, I wanted to say something like two, like a little bane weapon. You could also set up the encounter so that, like, 
whatever that item is or whatever goes on, you're trying to remind them of something. Make obtaining that weapon more, much more memorable than like dragging it off a guy. You know, like it could be in a box yeah. and then they have to get it. Right. So then, yeah. then, then, yeah. then it'll actually mean something. Well, I'll tell you that I just had one where the weapon was. There were two aberrations, gibbering numbers. And they're in a pit. And they were veering away from the sword. And they, they killed no problem. They're stuck in the pit. They couldn't rage the tank or anything. And they find the sword on this half eaten skeleton. And they go, oh, what's this? And they identify it. It's an axiomatic weapon. It's made against chaos. So they figure out who can wield it without losing levels. Or at least uh, whatever it is, make levels. So and bad you did. <laughs> I deliberately threw it in there. So it would be useful against the next immediate wave of dudes that are going to be fine for the rest of the dungeon. And it's been sitting in their bag since. Yeah, that's, that's why it's just like, boom. Which is bad. Two comments. The first one is when, when uh, I ran the third edition, um, well, whenever I do, really, I, I completely eliminate players' ability to metagame by, like, oh, that's totally a vampiric mimic. And yes, the null is a wear shark. Sorry, he turns into a shark, you know, and, or I'll roll, if I've the time to set up, I'll roll everything's HP out instead of using the given and like a using a monster's block because that way it, like you know this skeleton has 24 this one has 10 deal you know you can't metagame around it you can't expect it you just have to do what's best and then um i punish significantly whenever people are using bad tactics because when you lose you learn or at least you should and Slow if you button. don't, then you keep <laughs> yeah. well, you know, if you don't work together, you're going to die. Punishing yeah. bag tactics is a really great idea. We had a, a scenario similar to that where the players th thought they were being real clever and used a black fly to go scope out this maze that I had. They saw the zombies there. They saw the zombies crawl into the bushes, but yet they cut right to the, the hardest fight in the maze, and then the zombies came out of the bushes and swarmed them all. I'm like, you guys made a bad call, and now you're going to get eaten. And they, they almost, it was almost a TPK, but they did live through it, but it was rough. Yeah. But they learned. They know not to do that now. It's the dance is important thing. Uh, it's three half women who are doing an audience participation thing. Oh, okay. Well, I understand if everyone leaves, I guess. They're having a great time. In fact, I'm, <laughs> excuse me. I'm afraid of the gyms before it closes. I understand. Because yeah. all you gyms inspire me. You're like, damn, I can buy some stuff to use in my games. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy, it, man. And I'm only here today, so. Uh, yeah. no, well, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. And we only have about 15 minutes left, so let's try and uh, do a rapid fire here. I know you, we'll go here, here, then here, real quick. Okay. Um, one thing I was going to bring up is what uh, solutions do you have to players discussing rules in the middle of the game? Discussing rules in the middle of the game. Sand, sandbox it. Give them a certain amount of time. Make a ruling, and then let it. Then set that rule for that game, and have them figure it out after that game. If it changes, change it the next session. I, I would say, you know, we can look it up after the session, but now we're moving on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's right now, I'm, it's fiat because whatever it, you know, it's just it's like the NFL or whatever. It doesn't change the outcome of the game. You know, you can complain about it later, but it doesn't change anything. I mean, you know, it, it's the GM is making that ruling. That's why you're at the table. I think the only caveat is I won't, I, I won't let a player die over right. over a rule that I, I, I don't understand. Right. Short of that, you know, if it's what's the exact distance I can jump with a jump check and I don't feel like looking it up, yeah. we're fine. Yeah. Let's yeah. just, you know, make yeah. them all good to jump. I just been terrified of like getting it wrong and having it be wrong forever. Uh -huh. Like and you know, that it would break like, you know, the cohesion of the world. But like <laughs> I it it does and no one notices. Like, I, I get it wrong all the time. And like, it'll go one way one game and like totally different, you know, even the next session, and nobody even remembers. And so it, it, can, it can depend on the players. Like, certain players, like, I, I, I consider myself very lucky in that fact. But if you have those kind of players, then, you know, feel free to just make a ruling and, and, yeah, discuss it afterwards and hopefully set a rule. But even if you can't remember that rule the next time, like, just do the same thing. Like, just keep it moving. The, these guys can <coughs> argue something to death. Look, we had a half hour discussion in the middle of the game in regards to a magic rule in Sharon. Now, I wasn't playing with that one, but as it, it was half an hour from when they started the argument. And, you know, I did things like I went on a laptop and I just started browsing stuff because. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, a, it's such a game range. killer. It, it's, it's where you got to take the reins. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't the GM on that one. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd say, hey, can we make a, I, I would actually bring it up then as a player and say, hey, can we make a ruling now that can stick for this next session and then we'll move, we'll fix it afterwards because this is killing it. <laughs> and hopefully they'll listen. A good general policy to follow.
Oh no, go ahead then. Yeah. We'll go ahead. The last uh, session I was in, the GM asked afterwards, so how, I know the last half drive and how did it go? Immediately two people started whining and later on I sat with the GM and whined about the whiners because <laughs> the reason that they were whining is that the, the thing on average was 50% combat for the session. And they would like it if it was two thirds to 90% combat. And I'd like a session that was zero every once in a while. I, I play in the two thirds to 90% because that's the only games that I can get sometimes. But I really don't mind 50%. What do you what do you tell a GM to do in that case? I know different expectations. Yeah. That's unfortunately yeah, different that's practices. unfortunately a, a very hard negotiation that you have to do with your players. Mm -hmm. you know. I find when that occurs actually it's not so much typically combat as conflict. You can create conflict without combat and it will fill that role nicely. And that That's actually a good idea. Not, not, not with these no. Two. No. no. Have they considered war gaming as an option? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's very true. Maybe they're just in the wrong. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean we look for different things. You still want to socialize. Maybe, maybe you know, doing that. You talk, you talk about uh, board games every now and then. Maybe fill that up with some Warhammer or something every every couple of weeks. I, maybe and maybe they'll still want it. But I mean, it does come down to managing expectations and, and negotiation. Did, did you have something on that as well? Or, oh, separate, separate, separate. Okay, separate. All right. More topics are good. Very good. So yeah. Um, did, did, were you off too? No. Okay. Go. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah. 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 Go for it. Uh, no, I just wanted a quick poll. There's a lot of GMs here. How many have introduced players age 12 to 20 to the game in the last year? I want to get some hands. Uh, in the last so year? The last th 12 months, yes. Oh. Just to get kind of a rough feel for, you know, how many new people are coming into the game or that we're introducing. To 18 year old. I've done it, and what I do is then I just give them rules book and let them go on their own after that, you know. but. Just oh, trying cool. to get a feel about one fourth. Good. That's it. That's the only thing I had for it. Thanks, guys. Well, that's cool. Cool. No, but my son is eight and he actually plays with Lincoln. So yeah, that's that's cool. It's always nice to have more cool players. I think you know yeah, whatever we can do. I got it. Yes, you guys mentioned I run a website called Seeing Portals. It's an awesome and site. It's a yeah, and, and a lot of things we've talked about here. Yes, let me give you an award winning. <laughs> awesome sorry. <science. laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, like, more important than all that is the fact that like I made it because I had a lot of these same problems. And like the adventure write-ups and things like that, a lot of that stuff is just baked into it from the start. And you know, it's it's not perfect and you know it all still comes down to like having a good group, but using that website can help with a lot of things like organization yeah. and keeping track of what's happened in the campaign, keeping track of NPCs and that kind of stuff. So I've got some flyers here. Just come find me if you're interested. And you know, if, you know, the vast majority of these problems are people problems, and it won't solve that, but it will solve some of the other problems. And it's free. All about it's free. It's, it's, it's a great. It's a fantastic website. So, so it's it's really great. Great. I got I got flyers. Just catch me on YouTube. Um, you know, if you're going to take anything from this, I, I think the thing is is that you are not alone, and you probably do not suck as a GM. Um, if you suck, then we probably all suck, and I think we all suck a little bit. Um, we all have problems, and I mean, they're out there. I mean, it's so easy, like I said, to get discouraged because we read of these flawless, perfect campaigns that happen to, I don't know, wherever you guys also have 14 players per session. I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Not that guy. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Tell yeah. them to, to Chicago. Uh, to some players. You know, um, and, and that's the thing. But, I mean, you know, network out there, it, it depends how much you want to put into it, but I, I'd recommend, you know, I, I go online for a lot of GM advice and, um, you know, uh, just try and stay sane that way. For me, I think that's coping about what you're doing and have that reassurance, you know, and, and trying to better yourself. I think that's the big reason we did this this time. Yes, okay. Now this is I'm I'm asking this question from the player's point of view. Sure. To you as DMs. Now, several years ago, I was in a game, I forget what kind of game it was, but um, it was to basically have me. Anyways, I forget the actual title of the game, but um, we had a bunch of characters. One of them was a druid who was lawful evil. No one knew he was lawful evil because we were all very good about keeping our um, alignments hidden. Uh -huh. Now, part of the game was one of the characters was being chased by her old army. 
he turned around and sold them, sold her out and the rest of us because the player himself had to leave anyways and go on. He wasn't going to be able back for two months. The person, the ex-soldier turned around when he came back about two months later and immediately killed his new character because, quote, and she didn't do this with any of the other new ones, quote, I no longer trust new people who try to join our troop. As in character, she says that. What do you do about vindictive players? <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> You guys fall right out to the carpet. I mean, that, yes. that's, oh, yeah. that's yeah. Really yeah. chaotic stupid. That's, yeah. that's yeah. you know, when, that's when you do something like that and run behind your alignment and be like, oh, well, you know, yeah. my alignment says, you know, that's what I do. Chaotic yeah. stupid, I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's real you, good. You yeah. push up those consequences because normally, you know, hey, can I join your group? No, snap. You know, that's, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Where'd that come from? I would say probably that could have been mitigated right off the bat. If you've got one player leaving the group and they rat out the entire rest of the party, and the rest of the party gets the hit for that, that shouldn't have happened in the first place. That that seemed to have been addicted right off the bat. Well, I, 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 he was actually yeah. part of the plot. He had been working with the, for several uh, months. Yeah. Yeah. See, I would, I would love that to happen in my Me, so me too. Like, okay, that, I gotta go, go before I go. Bye bye. <laughs> in character, right. it was all in character. And then he said, okay, guys, I gotta go. Um, I'll be back in two months. See you guys then. He was, wow. he was, he was wow. not being vindictive. He was like, that's what his character did. And it was all in character for him. Did you spit in his Mountain Dew when he came back? <laughs> I <didn't really> <laughs> no, I mean, I was really with him. And I actually kind of thought it was an awesome thing. Even yeah. though he screwed me over, yeah. I thought it was cool. Yeah, the vindictiveness, he just got like this. Yeah. Yeah. No uh, place yeah. for it. We ended up with flackery checks for reasons like that. Our DM put a uh, flackery inside one of our low level followers' bodies. She had been his previous friend, and we went the entire campaign for like a year and a half, and this guy following us around. Flackery inside the guy's chest. So we implemented flackery checks after that, where we wound up and hit you in the chest with a you know, war hammer when you joined the group. <laughs> that was that's despite the players, more despite the DM. But. <laughs> Nice. All right, well, that's, uh, yeah, we're, so, so. yeah, we're getting. We got about five minutes till. Uh, I know you guys probably have other things to get to and check the dealer hall before it closes. Um, thank you so much for coming today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And um, uh, if you're interested, we uh, for our podcast or blogs. There's a lot of great blogs that link from mine. So uh, if you want, we do have some cards up here. And uh, thanks so much. Yeah.